Welcome back, friends. For today, in the next few episodes, Mike and I have the uh, pleasure, the privilege, the honor, um, and, and also an overwhelming task to uh, delve in a little bit to Isaiah. Um, I've titled it Sacred Scriptures Shakespeare. And um, that is really, in my opinion, a very, very fair, fair um, comparison. Um, Isaiah is a major prophet. He's listed at the, so the um, so scripture, it, 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 it doesn't read like our typical novels, right? The ordering of the books. And so in the prof, prophetic section, which doesn't mean that there, are, there aren't other books that have prophecy within them, um, such as First and Second Kings uh, with Elijah and Elijah, they certainly were prophets. They don't have their own books, and so they're considered prophets, but not um, part of the major prophetic books, for example. And Isaiah is listed first, and he's listed first. Um, I was about to say not because of importance, but I think some could make that case. He is. Um, he is to the Old Testament what Paul is to the New and what Shakespeare is to English literature. He's just that uh, foundational. He's foundational for the Jews and for the Islam, the is, those of the Islam faith as well. So he, and of course our blessed Lord, opens his ministry with quotation from Isaiah um, uh, in uh, setting the captives free. So it's 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 an important work. It's a serious work. It's a and it's delightful in all of that too, right? So um, yes, yeah, it's such a it's huge. It's so big. There's so much to it. I feel that you could spend forever just kind of diving deeper into it because it's and it's just one book <laughs> of the whole <laughs> scripture, you know. The the pastor that married Rupa and I in Australia for our Australia wedding, he asked us one night when we were hanging out with him and his family and his kiddos, went around asking everyone their favorite book of the Bible, and he said his was Isaiah because of how much it captured the whole story of the Bible just in that one book. And so you get so much of the Old Testament, you know, prophecy and then the mention of the fulfillment through Christ. And so I I just I really appreciated that sort of perspective on it because I feel it does just encompass so much and there's such a vastness to it where you could almost you can get the whole story of the Bible in that one book. You absolutely can. You absolutely can. Um and in fact uh is, is the next point here. It's full of both prophecies of Christ and words of rebuke and consolation for the people of God as he deals with his wayward people. Um, so one of the books we will be consulting of many is, as you just mentioned, this is Eric Tooley's book. Um, it's Baker Academics uh, published it. Reading the Prophets as Christian Scripture, a literary, canonical, and theological introduction. So that's right, Christian literature um, with Isaiah. So Isaiah were, served at the royal court for four kings, Judah, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. All were good except for Ahaz. The capital of Judah was Jerusalem, also called Zion. Um, and uh, we'll note that Isaiah is mentioned in 2 Kings, 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, and, and you can consult the notes for that. And as part of his job, and he's also um, is alleged to have come from a priest's family, he would have been highly educated. And certainly at a royal court, he would be considered a great, 
you would, communication would have to be on your resume, right? Um, additionally, as Shakespeare does, he writes in Hebraic verse. So as we know, Shakespeare writes in verse as well. Okay. So some of these factors lead biblical scholars to refer to this level of composition by Isaiah to be Shakespearean, to be Shakespearean. Um, so I have within our notes uh, the origin of the word, the Hebraic word, uh, the part of speech, the transliteration, phonetic spelling, and the definition salvation of Yah or for um, Israelites. Um, Jesus, he opened his public ministry reading from Isaiah, Luke 4, 14 to 30. Um, uh, and that references back to Isaiah 61. We have a jubilee year, which recalls Leviticus 25, 10, 13, you know, the setting of the slaves free. Right. Forgiveness of debts and everything. Forgiveness of debts. Forgiveness mm -hmm. of debts. Um, all right. Pro profit. So uh, we need to define terms. Always, always, always an important thing to do. So what is a profit? Um, so we have some general uh, aspects to the prophetic ministry and then how that those general ideas are played out individually with each of the prophets can vary. Mm -hmm. So a prophet's job essentially is to receive a word from God and go speak it. Those Though there are some prophets, they're unnamed in scripture, they receive a word and they write it. But so maybe we should say and go communicate it in the fashion they're supposed to. The prophets as a group are very diverse, spanning, yes, different historical realities. However, the message is unified because they are representing God who is one. People remembered what they said. They would repeat it over and over again. And we recall in past episodes when I know we have a parlor game where we like to tell, whisper secrets and ears and it goes around. And by the time it comes to whoever, it's nothing like it the first. Um, ancient peoples didn't do that, mm -hmm. right? Their, their, their lives depended on accurate transmission from one generation to the next. So they were pretty... Uh, they're a bit more careful than a parlor game, let's <laughs> say that way. And um, yes, and so they would repeat it over over again and maybe di in different ordering, depending on what the word of God spoke to the people that needed to hear it at that time, that moment in place. Yeah. I love how unique it is to each generation and just even thinking of the times when Israel was in exile and all these different things where it was exactly what they needed at that time. It's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right, my friends, let us pick up in the next episode. I'm still continuing on with the definition of prophet, his job, and uh, so forth. Till then, my friends, fide seratio.